TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Israel has reportedly struck strategic targets in the Islamic Republic of Iran in retaliation for the unprecedented RGC strike on Israeli territory some five days ago. Russia and China call on Iran and Israel to de-escalate regional tensions. The United States emphasizes that it was not part of any offensive operation against Iran, while reasserting support for Israel's security. Israel has reportedly struck strategic targets in the Islamic Republic of Iran in retaliation for the unprecedented RGC strike on Israeli territory some five days ago. In the lead-up to the retaliatory strike on Iran, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu visited Mossad headquarters for subsequent meetings with Mossad Director David Barna and subsequently with the Forum of Mossad Division Chiefs, during the course of which the Premier stressed that the Feast of Passover, which will be celebrated next week, is different in nature. This holiday is different because they have risen up to destroy us. This is very tangible by the axis of evil of Iran and its proxies, including Hamas. And on the other hand, from slavery to redemption. This is very tangible when we still have hostages being held in the monster's dungeons in Gaza. We are also committed to defeating the terrorist axis in Gaza, to freeing the hostages and to repelling the threat including that from Iran. These are very major tasks that require two things. The first thing that it requires is determination and the second is unity. Nations crumble, first of all, from within, not from external pressure, but from internal discord. The internal discord needs to disappear now because we are under existential threat, and in the face of an existential threat we must unite forces and not divide them. This is the most important thing there is. Premier Netanyahu went on to highlight that consecutive superpowers have disintegrated from within, urging Israelis to unite in the face of adversity. Great powers in their day, including global powers in our lifetime, fell in the absence of internal cohesion around a unifying idea. The unifying idea here is the return of the Jewish people to its land and the rebuilding of our defensive capability against those who want to destroy us. This is the most central and important idea more than anything else, before perfecting the world, more than any of the other values that we have. If we lack the ability to defend ourselves against those who seek our lives, we have nothing, and on this we must unite now with full force on this Passover and what comes afterward. Happy Holiday! Meanwhile, in Italy, the G7 foreign ministerial united in leveling an unequivocal condemnation of the Islamic Republic of Iran over its attacks on Israeli territory and pledged to unite further in slapping Tehran with additional sanctions to target its military industry. Given Iran's behavior in backing the Houthis, backing Hezbollah, backing Hamas, and of course the appalling state-on-state -state attack on Israel, it's quite right that with partners we take further action on sanctions. And that's what Britain has done today, sanctioning a further 13 people and entities to add to the already 400 sanctions that we've put in place. Iran's behavior is unacceptable and it's right that countries come together here at the G7 and make those points. Not just because of what Iran has been doing, but also as a message to Israel that we want to play our part in having a coordinated strategy that deals with uh, Iran's aggression that we saw so clearly against Israel over the weekend. London's top diplomat further highlighted that Western-aligned nations have cautioned Iran over its nuclear program. The West has had, not just the West, but of course countries uh, around the world uh, have had a very clear position about nuclear non-proliferation and the unacceptability of Iran uh, having a nuclear weapon. And that remains the case today. We work through the International Atomic Energy Authority and with partners to make sure that isn't the case. 
The remarks by Secretary Cameron were made in response to a comment by an RGC commander who holds the nuclear portfolio in Iran, warning that if Israel were to strike its nuclear program, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei would reevaluate his religious ruling over possessing nuclear weapons. If any threat or action against our country's nuclear facilities is made by the Zionist regime and used as a tool to pressure the Islamic Republic, it becomes possible for the Islamic Republic to review its nuclear doctrine and policies and deviate from its previous announced considerations. General Ahmad Hajtalab further doubled down on his threat, claiming that in the event of an Israeli strike on Iran's nuclear installations, the RGC would respond by targeting Israel's own nuclear infrastructure. It is possible for the Islamic Republic and armed forces that if there is any threat or action from the fake Zionist regime against our nuclear centers and nuclear facilities, there will be the possibility of retaliation with advanced missiles and the nuclear bases of this regime will be targeted. Meanwhile, in New York City, Iranian Foreign Minister Hussein Amir Abdullahian sought to convince the international community that its blatant strike on Israel was legitimate and to persuade Jerusalem to forego its inherent right to retaliate for the belligerent launch of over 350 projectiles on its sovereign territory. Iran's legitimate defense and countermeasures have been concluded. Therefore, the Israeli regime, the terrorist Israeli regime, must be compelled to stop any further military adventurism against our interests. Certainly, in case of any use of force by the Israeli regime and of violating our sovereignty, the Islamic Republic of Iran will not hesitate a bit to assert its inherent right, to give a decisive and proper response to it to make the regime regret its actions. As Tehran's top diplomat further spouted a long list of lies in an effort to justify Tehran's blatant aggression, the U.S. deputy ambassador to the world body pushed back on every single deceitful claim which the Islamic Republic has been uttering as part of the Ayatollah regime's information war. And while pledging ironclad support for Israel, the American emissary further highlighted Iran's direct involvement in the multi-sector war in Israel. We meet at a moment of great peril in the region. Iran and its militant partners, including Hamas, have driven us to the precipice of a broader conflict. The United States condemns Iran's direct attack on Israel, which we, along with Israel and other partners, helped to defeat. There is no doubt Iran's aim in launching more than 300 munitions at Israel was to inflict significant damage and cause a loss of life. The U.S. commitment to Israel's security is ironclad, repeat, ironclad, and our contributions to Israel's defense against Iran are a clear manifestation of that commitment. Iran has provided significant funding and training for the military wing of Hamas, which, as we know, perpetrated unspeakable acts of cruelty on October 7 against Israelis, Americans, and citizens from countries all over the world. This long-standing Iranian support continues to contribute to the current crisis in Gaza. While Iran's minister will offer excuses for these actions today, we have a collective responsibility to set the record straight on Iran's nefarious actions to ensure that Iran both complies with the Council's resolutions and ceases its violations of international law. Meanwhile, during the early hours of this morning, Pre-dawn Israel time, American media outlets initially reported an alleged Israeli attack in Iran in its second largest city, Isfahan. 
Her separate reports, the multifaceted attack included surface-to-surface -surface missiles, drones, and other means. Iranian sources were subsequently cited as saying that Iran did not identify any hostile aircraft or projectile penetrating its airspace, but rather boastfully claimed that a cluster of so-called Mosquito drones attempting to target a radar had successfully been intercepted in the area of Tabriz. Separately, Iranian social media published on RGC-linked media visuals of rocket alert sirens sounding in the vicinity of Isfahan airport, several kilometers from adjacent to one of Iran's core nuclear reactors. And while a long list of uncorroborated reports have flooded separate media outlets since then, two Western intelligence officials have told TV7 that only the perpetrators and the Ayatollah regime itself are privy to the scope and devastation of the attack. Moreover, the nature of the low signature attack, which may have included a couple of diversions alongside additional strikes and throughout multiple strategic locations, left Tehran the option to save face while in tandem to avoid an all-out escalation that could have far-reaching implications for the region in particular and the world at large. Meanwhile, Tehran's global allies have urged the Ayatollah regime to de-escalate. So far, there have been no official statements from Israel, so we are studying this information. It is too early to give any comments without understanding the details. But in any case, no matter what, we still advocate restraint on the part of the parties and the refusal of any actions that could provoke a further escalation of tension in such a difficult region. China opposes any actions that lead to tension and further escalation of the situation. China will continue to play a constructive role in promoting the easing of tensions. Meanwhile, in response to the reported strike on Iran, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken, in his closing remarks after the G7 foreign ministerial in Italy, emphasized that the United States was not involved in an offensive operation. The United States has not been involved in any offensive operations. Uh, what we're focused on, what the G7 is focused on, and again, it's reflected in our statement and in our conversation, is our work to de-escalate uh, tensions. Um, to de-escalate from any potential conflict. Uh, you saw Israel on the receiving end of an unprecedented attack, um, but our focus has been on, of course, making sure that Israel can effectively defend itself, but also de-escalating tensions, uh, avoiding uh, conflict. Uh, and that remains our focus. Thank you for watching TV7 Israel News. In light of the festival of Passover, TV7 Israel News won't broadcast its daily edition on Monday. However, the daily TV7 Israel at War update will air per usual. I would like to also note, if you're blessed by our productions, which are exclusively donation-based and as such broadcast free of charge, please consider prescribing a donation. You can do so via our website at www.tv7israelnews.com. Last but not least, as ever, I would like to encourage you to pray for the peace of Jerusalem and salvation of Israel. Jonathan Hessen, wishing you a Chag Chirut Sameach. God willing, we'll see you during our next update. Until then, Shalom from Jerusalem.